Having said all that, it would be a mistake to think about climate only through the prism of threats. Here's why. Every country on the planet has to do two things, reduce emissions and prepare for the unavoidable impacts of climate change. American innovation and industry can be at the forefront of both. This is what President Biden means when he says, and I quote, when I think of climate change, I think jobs, end quote. To give you a sense of scale, consider that by 2040, the world will face a $4.6 trillion infrastructure gap. The United States has a big stake in how that infrastructure is built. Not only whether it creates opportunities for American workers and businesses, but also whether it's green and sustainable and done in a way that's transparent respects workers' rights, gives the local population a say, and doesn't mire developing countries and communities in debt. That's an opportunity for us. Or consider the massive investments countries are making in clean energy. Renewables are now the cheapest source of bulk electricity in countries that contain two-thirds of the world's population. And the global renewable energy market is projected to be $2.15 trillion by 2025. That's over 35 times the size of the current market for renewables in the United States. Already, solar and wind technicians are among the fastest growing jobs in America. It's difficult to imagine the United States winning the long-term strategic competition with China if we cannot lead the renewable energy revolution. Right now, we're falling behind. China is the largest producer and exporter of solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, electric vehicles. It holds nearly a third of the world's renewable energy patents. If we don't catch up, America will miss the chance to shape the world's climate future in a way that reflects our interests and values, and we'll lose out on countless jobs for the American people. Now let me be clear. Goal number one of our climate policy is preventing catastrophe. We're rooting for every country, business and community, to get better at cutting emissions and building resilience. But that doesn't mean we don't have a stake in America developing these innovations and exporting them to the world. And it doesn't mean we, we don't want to shape the way countries reduce their emissions and adapt to climate change. So how can we do that? We can start with leading by the power of our example. As we work to meet our ambitious climate targets, the following core principles will guide our approach. We will significantly increase our investment in clean energy research and development because it's how we will catalyze breakthroughs that benefit American communities and create American jobs. In all our climate investments, we will aim not only to promote growth, but also equity. We'll be inclusive, focusing on providing Americans across the country and from a range of communities with good paying jobs and the opportunity to join a union. We'll empower youth not just because they will bear more of the consequences of climate change, but also because of the urgency, ingenuity, and leadership they've demonstrated in confronting this crisis. We will enlist state, states, cities, businesses, large and small, civil society, and other coalitions as partners and models. Others have been doing groundbreaking work in this field for a long time. We'll lift them up and share best practices. And this is important. We will be mindful that for all the opportunities offered by the unavoidable shift to clean energy, not every American worker will win out in the near term. Some livelihoods and communities that relied on old industries will be hit hard. We won't leave those Americans behind. We'll provide our fellow Americans with pathways to new sustainable livelihoods and support as they navigate this transition. Right after taking office, President Biden created the Interagency Working Group on Coal and Power Plant Communities and Economic Revitalization. It's working across the government to identify and deliver federal resources to revitalize the local economics of coal, oil, gas, and power plant communities, and ensure benefits and protections for workers in those same communities. And as part of his American Jobs Plan, the President proposed a $16 billion upfront investment to put hundreds of thousands of people to work in union jobs, plugging abandoned oil and gas wells and mines. If we can stay true to these principles while meeting our climate targets, we'll demonstrate a model that other countries will want to partner with and follow. 